I invite you and challenge you to focus your attention on your behavior that messes things up, although it's really easy to see his behavior. If you need to, draw a line down the middle of the page, and when what he does wrong comes to mind, quickly write it down on one side of the paper so it's out of your head, so you can make room in your brain for what you do wrong. This is a sensitive subject when it comes to experiencing trauma. We want to be validating of your trauma-based feelings. We want to validate that you have a right to be in pain, but you want to be very selective about what your behavior is when you have those feelings. The easiest way to measure this is the way you would train your own daughters. If someone was hurting your daughter, would you say, sweetie, now you need to take this Tonka truck and hit him in the head? Because when you are scared, you hit people. As parents, we expect our children to not hurt each other. But if one of them does misbehave and hurt the other one, as my parents said, and maybe your parents do, two wrongs don't make a right. This is challenging because it's hard to be convincing to say you have a right to feel what you feel, but you do not have a right to hurt back. Now, if they say, when you walk away from me and protect yourself, that hurts me. Okay, no, 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 that's just, that's just messing with someone's head. If you're finding this video helpful or want to help us reach others in need, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really supports our channel. Thank you. As you train your daughters to handle circumstances, you want to be very confident in the instructions you give her, and that way you can follow your own instructions. So you have to decide which behaviors are okay with you and which behaviors are not okay with you. When people behave a certain way, you can't just say that's good or bad. In every circumstance, the value system has to adjust based on the situation. So would I kill someone in order to protect my children, myself, and my family? Absolutely. So that is within my value system. There's no such thing as a black and white rule around that. What matters is your behavior was within your value system. This is why we never say you should do this and you should not do that because you're going to be in circumstances that only you can decide what your value system is and what is appropriate for the circumstances and no one outside of you has a right to judge you. So when I'm doing work with people, the only thing I'm looking for is are they behaving within their value system within those circumstances? And when they say, but is that the right thing to do? I'm all, I don't know. I'm not you. I'm not in that circumstance. You're the only one who knows the answer to that. It's so important to gain confidence in yourself that you can trust your own decisions and your own view on things because even your spouse will disagree with you on your behavior. The thing that's the most magic, and I would love for you ladies to do this, but I'm pushing the men even harder because it's even of more value if the men do it, that when you try to get something right and you reflect on it, you actually take notes while you're reflecting. Here's what I got right. Here's what I got wrong. Here's what Satan did involved. I'm just kind of ro rolling it through my head. Here's what I wish I would have done differently. You just kind of write some notes so you can put at the top of the page what you tried to get right. Then write the word discover, and then you write, take some notes on what you learn when you're reading a book, when you're watching a video, listening to a podcast, attending a class, you do some discovery work and you take some notes on what you learn on how to be better at that subject. Then you go over to plan and you go, all right, next time I'm in that situation, here's my plan. When he says this, or if he does that, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, I'm going to hold my face like this, I'm going to hold my body like that. So if in that situation again, I'm ready to act according to my new plan. And you just do one of these a day, one of these every other day, use some personal development, some 1% work. Now ladies, imagine that your husband tries to get something right, sits down and sits down with God and reflects on it and take some notes on it. Then he does some research on his own to learn more about how to behave better in that area and takes notes on it and then writes down a plan for how to handle it better next time. And then he lets you read that. Can you imagine what it would be like to read something like that? You have a whole lot more patience for them acting wrong or not getting it right when you see all this brain work they've done behind their effort. So I'm living in a world, a fantasy world in my position as a, as a leader and trainer of marriages where the wives are doing this and they leave it where the husband can find it and the husbands are doing it and they leave it where the wife can find it and pretty soon they start just sharing it over and over again and both people are celebrating the internal process of the other and they're amazed by it and they develop a reverence for it but no one criticizes because the man's not qualified to tell you how to be a woman and you're not qualified to tell him how to be a man and you just get to watch it and be amazed by it as opposed to give them advice and feedback on it and you get to know what's going on in his head it takes a lot of courage so if you don't aren't ready to share them do them anyway and have them where you can look at them someday if he ever earns the right to be aware of your inner workings then you'll have a stack of these to look at and hopefully my instruction to the men is be doing these regularly and put them where you can find it do them regularly to put them where the wife can find it put do it regularly to put it where the wife can find it